Hello students, so in the previous class uh, we introduced the idea of chaos and uh, what do we actually mean by uh, chaotic systems. I also introduced the definition of a, tra a tractor which was in some way in some abstract way and um, uh, we also gave, um, I also gave one example um, and uh, today we will continue, uh, we will start with uh, one or two examples and then we will slowly define some terminologies and theorems associated with it, right. So, in the previous class, I was showing you some uh, examples that are called as tent map and in case of tent map, uh, how we determine the stationary points and uh, under which condition both the stationary points were unstable and uh, we'll continue that discussion. So, if we consider, let's say, uh, the logistic, logistic uh, um, growth um, um, map or logistic growth model. So, the population growth model or the logistic growth model can be given by um, of this type. Uh, So, it is given by dx dt is equals to uh, some a times uh, um, x times 1 minus uh, x something like this and if we want to if we want if, if we want to write uh, in terms of um, uh, iterative scheme then it can be written as xn plus 1 is equals to a times xn 1 minus xn. So, where a is actually the growth rate where a is the is the growth rate of the system, growth rate of the population, growth rate of the population. I think population growth model or, or logistic uh, growth model you might be familiar with uh, of the um, of the population, right. So, um, basically um, it can be shown that at least uh, uh, numerically, so it can be shown, it can be shown numerically numerically that uh, for most values for most values uh, of a greater than 3.6 right the system is chaotic chaotic that means, uh, if you choose a greater than 3.6 and then if you are playing with the initial conditions, then the system will show uh, chaotic behavior, right. So, this uh, particular uh, logistic growth model, population model is one such example where um, the chaotic behavior of the system can be observed. Um, similarly, there are a lot of different equations. So, um, for example, um, something called a Henon map. Uh, so, th this is the second example, then the first example we gave in the previous class, then there is another one called Henon uh, map, which is basically of this type, uh, xn plus 1 is equals to 1 minus a xn is a xn square plus uh, yn and uh, yn plus 1 is equals to b of xn. So, this is uh, an example in 2D. So, Henon map is a two-dimensional is a two dimensional map is a two dimensional uh, equation equation which is given by this so here also um, uh, uh, at so numerically one can verify that if uh, v is equals to 0.3 and uh, a is varied and a is varied um, if uh, then it is observed then and a is varied then let me erase this one then then it is observed that then it is observed that at a is equals to 0.3675 this we can verify uh, it uh, with uh, with uh, uh, it is observed that uh, starting um, it is observed that, let me just, uh, it is observed, reformulate this sentence, uh, it is uh, a period, A is varied, uh, just a minute, varied, um, a period doubling cascade, a period doubling <coughs> cascade is observed is observed uh, starting at 
A is equals to 0 0.3675 uh, with a transition with a transition to chaos at A is equals to 1.0580 and so on. That means after this um, it will start showing the chaotic behavior. So we fix B is equals to 0.3 and a is varying so a um, a period doubling cascade so this is s a period doubling cascade is obtained that means uh, uh, the behavior of the solution will start changing immediately and uh, from a equals to 0 0.3675 to a equals to 1.0580 it will slowly transition from being a stable to being a chaotic solution right so this is um, of course this can be verified uh, using some numerical schemes um, so we just want to state the behavior. Then there is one more example. It is called as Lorentz equation. Lorentz equation, and uh, this is x dot equals to sigma y minus x, and then we have uh, y dot equals to minus of x z plus r x minus y, and uh, z dot equals to x y minus of b z uh, describes describe a few characteristics character uh, characteristic behavior of climate so as i was saying uh, in the previous class that uh, lorenz also noticed the similar behavior behavior of the climate of the climate so, in this um, uh, model, the spatial dependence is replaced by description of the modes and uh, for the parameter value, for the parameter values, values, uh, sigma equals to 10, b is uh, equals to 8 by 3 and uh, r greater than 24.74. Uh, chaotic solutions are obtained. Chaotic, chaotic solutions are obtained. Uh, we may try to solve it using the Gifurta method, and uh, from there we can uh, slowly uh, try to solve it. And uh, for these values, we can see that this, um, um, how to say, this um, chaotic behavior of the solution is obtained and for obvious reasons the attractor is called as a butterfly of Lorentz and uh, it is uh, sort of has a butterfly kind of structure right. So these are some of the examples or a few examples which has something to do with the chaotic behavior of the solution and we can see that for what values of the parameter um, we are getting this um, uh, chaotic behavior right. So now we will move on to um, as few definitions. So, we will first start with uh, local divergence. Local divergence. So, in the previous uh, section, we saw that uh, a small change in the initial condition gives a uh, dramatic behavior of the solution. And uh, in the in this section, we will just uh, introduce the notion of local divergence, and uh, we see the uh, the phenomena when the sensitive dependence on the initial condition uh, actually happens. So, in order to do that, first of all, we'll start with the definition of local divergence. So, let us say the system x dot equals to f of x. It can be a system, so x one, x two, x three, up to x n, and uh, on the right hand side, we also have uh, um, f1, f2, f3 up to fn uh, is said to be is said to be locally divergent, locally divergent at x0 uh, if the solution starting at x0 starting at x0 and the solution starting 
at any arbitrary point point in the vicinity of x0 in the vicinity of x0 uh, diverges exponentially diverges exponentially so that is for any epsilon positive arbitrary small arbitrary small arbitrary small uh, the solution the solution diverges diverges at x0 plus epsilon that means uh, uh, under any small change within the initial condition the solution will actually uh, diverges exponentially so such kind of uh, divergence is called as local divergence that means if you are changing the, uh, the the point x0 to x0 plus epsilon locally that means very close to x0 then in that case the solution will simply diverge so to complete this definition we have to specify the notion of this arbitrary point right what do we mean by this arbitrary point so um, and exponential divergence to that end we linearize around x0 so just to give the notion of this uh, arbitrary point and the divergence exponentially let us linearize around the point x0 so we linearize around the point x0 and uh, obtain the solution as uh, x dot equals to j of x0 equals to x where j is the Jacobian of F, Jacobian matrix of F, let Jx0 has the eigenvalues, has the eigenvalues, has the eigenvalues lambda j corresponding uh, as the eigenvalues lambda j and uh, the corresponding corresponding eigenvectors as vj where j running from 1 2 3 dot dot and so on so then for convenience uh, let us say all lambda j's are different because for convenience let us say that all lambda j's are different uh, so that vj's are linearly independent so that vj's are linearly independent right so then uh, the solutions so the solutions of the second equation that means after linearization i think i didn't give the equation number so let us call it as equation number one this is equation number two so the solution of two um, with initial values with initial values x0 lie in the uh, so called tangent space in the so called tangent space tx0 right so this linear so this tx0 the tangent space this linear uh, vector space vector space has x0 as the origin 
right because it was formulated around x0 since uh, 2 equation 2 is linear is linear <coughs> we can describe the growth behavior and describe the growth behavior of its solutions quite well of its solutions quite well and uh, since any initial condition x1 in the vicinity of x0 in the vicinity of x0 can be written as x1 equals to x0 plus summation j running from 1 to n cj vj uh, the solutions let us call it as equation number 3 the solutions x1 t of 2 with initial conditions condition x1 is given by uh, x1 t is equals to <coughs> x0 t plus summation j uh, c j e to the power lambda j t into v j where x0 t is the solution of 2.2 where x0 where x0 t is the solution of equation 2 is the solution of equation 2 with initial condition x0 right the solution x0 t and x1 t thus diverges exponentially if at least one of the lambda j's has positive real part so that means uh, the solution x1 t and x0 t the solutions so we know that the x x zeros are uh, the solutions of uh, equation number 2 and x1 is a solution of equation number uh, is a solution uh, in I mean when we have changed the initial condition by adding this uh, little bit cj vj in the initial point x0. So, x1 is the new modified solution or new obtained solution. So, both x1 and x0 they the solutions the solutions x0 t x0 t and x1 t thus diverges exponentially diverges exponentially as t tends to infinity if any one of the eigenvalues becomes positive because then exponential is positive so as t tends to infinity it will take the solution to um, infinity so in order to uh, have them uh, non divergent uh, properties so all these eigenvalues must be less than zero right so then diverges exponentially if any one of the <coughs> If any one of the eigenvalues eigenvalues um, lambda j's has a positive real part, a real part. The uh, imaginary part is basically written as cos theta plus i sin theta from that Euler's formula. So they oscillate, but um, if you have positive eigenvalues, then in that case, or the real part of the eigenvalue is positive, then in that case, that exponential will go towards infinity, right? So has the positive real part, and if uh, the vector, and if the vector x1, x1 is arbitrary in the sense of none of the CJs is zero, and if the vector uh, x1 is arbitrary in the sense that 
none of the cj is zero right so from numerical point of view the uh, the this later condition is quite natural and the x is generated from x0 including uh, so from uh, our fairly rounding of errors so the solution x0 and x1 are tangent to the solution of the original nonlinear equation right and uh, the solutions of the nonlinear equation then uh, set to diverge exponentially so here we um, basically uh, we can write that uh, from a numerical point of view from a numerical point of view um, the second condition or the latter condition the latter condition is quite natural is quite natural as uh, x is generated from x0 generated from x0 including fairly random rounding offs rounding uh, rounding errors uh, rounding errors right the solutions x0 t x0 t and x1 t and x1 t uh, and x1 t of 2 are tangent to the solution of original equation 1 of original equation 1 with initial values with initial values x0 and x1 right so the solution of uh, the nonlinear equation the solution the original equation the solution of the nonlinear equation the solution of the nonlinear equation 1 the solutions of the nonlinear equation 1 uh, are then said to be exponentially <coughs> divergent and uh, and uh, the solutions of the nonlinear equation 1 are then said to be exponentially divergent right so therefore this is uh, somewhat uh, we mean uh, by this um, local divergence that uh, you have a nonlinear uh, ode and uh, with some initial conditions so when you are altering the uh, the initial condition if you are choosing any arbitrary point in the neighborhood of the initial condition then the solution shows you um, an erratic behavior or dramatic behavior so uh, that means it is exponentially divergent and therefore we call it uh, as a local divergence so locally when you are changing the initial condition it is showing the divergence uh, property and uh, <clears throat> And there are some examples uh, as I was uh, mentioning uh, this uh, tent map and then uh, logistic map. So, let us uh, give one example. So, in case of logistic map, um, so the logistic map, whatever we had uh, in previously, just take the same logistic map, has the derivative that means the right hand side has the derivative uh, f dash x derivative v uh, f dash x equals to mu times 1 minus 2x right and uh, so uh, it depends both on mu and x depends both on mu and x such that uh, whether f dash x is greater than 1 or not right so uh, we know that so previously we argued or we know that uh, uh, the convergence 
the convergence to periodic solution may occur to periodic solution may occur if mu is less than 3.57 right and uh, for one less than mu less than uh, 3.57 uh, this uh, map is locally divergent is locally divergent near that means now if we choose the initial condition x0 equals to 0 and x0 equals to 1 that means for either one of these initial conditions but not around <coughs> so if you choose the initial condition x0 equals to half then it is different Ha. So, the stable periodic orbits are mainly located in the regions without local divergence. So, the stable, the stable periodic orbits are mainly located in regions without local divergence. So, if there is a local divergence, then we cannot have stable periodic orbits without local divergence, right. So, this is what we mean by uh, local divergence. That means, uh, we are looking for the uh, stability of the solution uh, around the initial condition. So, if, if uh, it is uh, exponentially divergent, so then in that case, um, we call it as a locally divergent uh, solution, right. So, I will stop here today and uh, we will continue this discussion in the next class. I will give maybe one more example on the local divergence and then we will start with the Lyapunov exponent and uh, from there we will continue the discussion to fractal dimensions and uh, we will see how uh, these things are motivated in the context of chaos theory. So, I will stop here today and I will see you in the next class. Thank <clears throat> you.